Hello, welcome to Azure Terraformer, putting the Azure back into Terraform. Today is the second episode where we'll be setting up a basic network on Azure. Um, so let's get started. Uh, last episode, um, I showed you how to set up the basic structure, so I'm not going to go through that again. I'm going to snag some of my files, my versions file, my variables file, my variable parameters file, and probably my resource group structure, kind of like that. Let me up a folder. All right, so we're going to do terraform init. And we should be rocking and rolling. Um, and I'm going to have to change this from EP1 to EP2 just for giggles. All right, so the first thing when you're doing a network is you need a virtual network. Boom. So let's go get virtual network. So the virtual network is the foundation of all the things. I'm going to strip out the sample. Okay. Now, as you look at this, okay, the you know, I copy and paste from these samples, but um, they're, they're really, really not always the best. So it's important you know um, a little bit about what's going on here. So first of all, let's just start with our naming conventions, right? So I'm going to go to here and look up virtual network, and lo and behold, it's prefixed with a VNet. So I can just drop VNet in here. And again, v, VNets, virtual networks, they don't have to have uh, the, such crazy bad naming conventions. So we can use hyphens and all that good stuff. Um, I don't really need DNS servers um, yet. Um, if I set up my own Active Directory or something like that, I might need DNS servers. So I'm just going to turn that off for now. Um, and I'm going to get rid of tags. Don't tag anything ever. <laughs> um, and now this is what's important. So a lot of these resources, um, in a lot of resources in Terraform, you can configure sub resources on the main resource using a block, which is what which is what we see here. We've got this is a block in Terraform, um, and this can be convenient and easy and quick and dirty. Um, but the problem is um, oftentimes with these block embedded block resources, if you want to go add a subnet from someplace else, um, like let's say you built this virtual network um, in one project and then you want to go manage and add some subnets from another project, if you reference this virtual network, um, you know, using a data reference and then you spin up new subnets, that'll work all well and good until the Terraform that actually created that subnet runs again and is going to try and wipe, like wipe away those uh, subnets that you were create that you created somewhere else. Right. So I think it's, in my opinion, it's a best practice to always avoid using embedded, embedded blocks. Um, so I'm just going to go find the resource. Uh, I'm just going to go subnet. Okay. And lo and behold, I have a subnet resource here with a bunch of gobbledygook that I don't need. And I'm just going to create a subnet. I only need one. You know, don't need two. Maybe I'll need two later. That's about it. And the subnet, of course, has to be in the address space of this. So that should be good. And if we go look at our subnet, subnets start with an Snet. I don't know, man. Who are you going to argue? Snet, and we'll just call this default. And we'll just call this the default subnet. 
and we got to update the resource group to be main and the vnet is going to be main and we're going to get rid of all this delegation we'll talk about that in a future episode um, that's a big bundle of topic altogether so now i can run terraform init and let's just go get this thing out out there um and th this will pretty much get me a basic network um now the last thing that you're going to need to do um is you're going to need to attach a an, an nsg um, or a security group so there are two types there's a network security group which is used mainly for when you want to control traffic based on ips and ports um, and then there's an application security group which is where um, you have a logical um, group of resources in azure so it's it's not necessarily based on like a particular ip address or ip ip range um, you can you can join resources to that group and and uh enroll it but we're not going to mess with that right now i guess i could you know maybe maybe i will maybe i will you know it'll be a stretch goal how about that so we got uh, i'm jumping ahead nsg yep that that actually is the prefix sorry kind of give giving it away and we'll just call this the default nsg and we gotta use, reference the correct resource group and the, the, the correct location now again look you know don't tag anything <laughs> um now again i've got this security rule block same thing as subnets i'm going to advise you not to use block resources and i'm going to recommend that you uh, create a security group rule if we can find it uh, i don't know why it wasn't showing up network security rule yes interesting so the naming convention doesn't doesn't follow like normal standards but um in the sense that oh and i hate this i hate this um always always put the bigger the more important things at the top you know um so here we got the resource group main and the nsg name which is also main and we're going to call this uh rule i don't know we'll just call it rule one you gotta get rid of the double quotes and we'll call this rule one rule 100 it's a priority of 100 and that i guess you know maybe that's useful we'll probably i'll probably go into you know some some good nsg templates um that are good baseline security in a future in a future episode but you know this is just to give you kind of some basic structure of of how to link these things together so we have a resource group and then we have a virtual network in that resource group we have a subnet in the virtual network whoa sorry we have an nsg that's off by itself hanging out okay we have an nsg rule that's attached to that nsg okay and now in order to use our nsg we have to associate this nsg with the subnet and we we also do that with um And where is it? It's really long. <laughs> it's a really long name. And this is one of those like uh, really simple resources. And it's just, it's one of those key value pair tables, you know, where it's just like default rule one. So this is the association of that, of our default subnet and our rule one group 
or maybe it's just the default the default group so I should call it the default the default group otherwise it'll get confusing okay so we have oh and it's not a rule like why would I why would I associate a rule to a subnet that doesn't make any sense so we're getting the ID again this is that this is gonna uh, evaluate to be that resource ID URL right subscriptions GUID resource provider slash you know network NSG name blah 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 it's gonna be a nasty string and all that right <clears throat> but that's what it is and so now I've got the uh, linkage between all these resources and I'm making my subnet use that NSG. And so let's run apply on this and then we'll go interrogate the resource group and check out what we created. And so if we go out here, so my new resource group um, is Mr. Eight. Mr. 8x8, eight eight. Jig, jiggity jig, Mr. 8x8, eight eight, jiggity jig, okay, nice. So I got my VNet, I've got a subnet in here um, with 251 available IPs, and I don't have an NSG set up yet, but we will see that soon, soon, and... This is our plan, so it hasn't applied yet. It's still creating. There we go. Uh, should be. So we, oh, we, we've created uh, the association hasn't created yet. Okay, still, still waiting. Okay, should all be done. Let's go back to our resource group. Let's hit refresh should see some new things. So here's our NSG. Not a, not a wonderful name. Not, not super proud of this name, you know, but there you go. It works. Um, we can also see it's associated with a subnet. Uh, there, I think there's a, yeah, here we go. So there's a, there's a way to navigate it from both angles. So this is the subnet that it's associated. We can disassociate. Don't do that. That's called drift. Um, we can also go and access the NSG the opposite way by navigating the subnet, that bastion, that'll be for a future uh, episode. And then boom, there you go. There's your, so here's our subnet and now it has an NSG that's associated with it. So very good practice to always attach an NSG to your subnets. So um, you at least can have a place where you can start locking down traffic and protecting um, what's stored in your uh, virtual network. Um, yeah, so that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Um, you learned how to set up a basic virtual network with subnets and NSGs. Um, and in the next episode, we're going to finish off the foundations of Azure using Key Vault before we get into really fun stuff using virtual machines, uh, which are going to leverage pretty much everything that we've talked to up until this point, including Key Vault next time. Um, we're going to use our observability stack. We're going to use um, our virtual network and we're going to use our Key Vault uh, for all of these things. So um, look forward to seeing the, you then turn on those notifications so you can be made aware of when I publish my next video. Um, and until next time, we'll see you on Azure Terraformer. Thanks a lot.